Hello, developers. In this video, I will show you on how to make a directional animation system with just one animation. This is an improved and shorter video with less scripts, too. I felt like I didn't explain well enough, nor did I make the scripts efficient in the previous video, so if you have followed the previous tutorial, then you don't need to script again for this video. Anyways, if you need any help or have any questions, you can join the Discord server in the description. Let's get right to the tutorial. Firstly, we'll need to set up everything we need. Create a local script in Starter Player and Starter Character Scripts. After that, we'll need the Animate Script. But we first need to press the Play button first, because the only way we can acquire it is to copy it from an active player. Open your workspace, and then open your player. You should see a local script named Animate. Right-click on that and press Copy. Stop your game. After that, you right-click Starter Character Scripts and then press Paste Into. The Animate script should appear below Starter Character Scripts. You're pretty much done with the setup. Now let's start scripting. We'll first reference all the necessary variables. And then we'll reference the original C0, because we'll need that for setting up the C0 later. The player table is important because we won't use remote events this time. We use another method of calculating everything in our own client. These variables are customizable. You are free to choose any value you want. If you don't want the player looking so far horizontally, you can use 65 degrees for the range of motion variable. The torso won't rotate as much, but the legs will rotate even farther. The lerp speed is customizable too. You can play around with it. Every variable I just mentioned is very customizable as it won't error anything. So feel free to change the values a bit. It's all trial and error. Now we can start with the main code. We'll first convert the range of motion variable and range of motion torso variable to radians. Because Roblox calculates C-frame in radians, it's better to change it first before calculating. Now we continue with a function. This function calculates the C0. The function has four parameters. The first one is delta time. The second one is the root part of the humanoids, the third one is humanoid, and the fourth one is torso. These parameters, except the delta time 1, are important for changing the actual C0 visually. First, we'll get the direction of movement relative to the humanoid's root part. To get that, we'll need to use the vector to object space function from the humanoid's root part C frame. Every C frame has this function and a ton more. After we do that, we plug in the humanoid's root part assembly linear velocity. The assembly linear velocity of the humanoid's root part is originally in world axis. With this function, we are converting that to the humanoid's root part direction, so we know if the humanoid's root part is moving right, left, or any other direction. And then we'll change the result that we just got, and we divide the x and z velocity by the humanoid's walk speed and remove the y velocity. This will result in a vector 3 containing only x and z velocity that range from 0 to 1. Now, we calculate the x result. To do this, we'll multiply the x velocity with the range of motion variable, and that results a number between minus 45 degrees and 45 degrees. That range of motion variable is then subtracted with the absolute value of the Z direction. We multiplied the Z direction with the range of motion variable that was divided by 2. Now we check whether or not the player is walking backwards. If they are, then we invert all the X results variable. Now, the hard part. The legs are the hardest to make. 
Roblox made the legs complicated because their Motor 6D connection is not in the center. I do not know why, but we have to make do. We make the legs C0C frame to the original leg C0, and then we multiply that with a new C frame. The new C frame has X result 2, because the X result 2 is the variable that sets how far to position the legs. You could entirely skip the C frame dot new step and skip to the C frame dot angles if you set your motor 6D connection to the center. But if you already have animated a lot with your game, well, I don't recommend doing it since it changes the legs, so your animations might look off. Now we set the root joint, which connect the torso and the humanoid's root part to the original root joint C frame, and then we multiply that with an angle C frame, which has the X result torso variable. It's the same with the next C0, but it doesn't have a negative at the X result torso. Now, we'll actually set the C0. We'll do the method by using the built-in lerp function. For the time parameter, we use a formula that makes it frame dependent. So it doesn't matter if you have 30, 60, or 144 FPS. The formula is 1 minus lerp speed to the power of delta time. Now we'll do the run service step. Here we only need to get every player, including the local player, make sure they have a character, and then calculate their C0 using the calculate function we made before. We just need to pass over the necessary variables to the calculate function. Pretty simple. First, we'll loop over every player in the server. Then we check whether or not that player is already in the player's table. If they're not, then we insert them to the player's table. Now we loop over every player in the player's table, checking whether or not they're still valid for the calculate function. We do that by using a bunch of if checks. If they do meet the requirements for the check, then we use continue or remove them from the player table entirely, if they passed all the if checks, then we can pass all the necessary variables to the calculate function. This system entirely makes it server lag free because we don't need to pass a remote event every one and a half second. This is why it makes it better than the previous, albeit same tutorial. Just make sure every walk speed change is done on the server. Now the last thing we need to do is make sure that if the local player is moving backwards, then we reverse the walk animation. We don't need to do this for all players because animations are replicated automatically to the server. We do a run service step, and then we get the direction of movement again. After that, we'll just check if the Z velocity is bigger than zero or not. Because R6 rigs have their humanoid root part backwards, we reverse it if it actually is bigger than zero. Make sure you change the if, check that checks the Roblox animation ID or else it won't work. We're basically finished. Let's test it out. I've opened up a game with my alt account, and wow, the results look pretty nice. Let's test out to see if other players work or not. Wow! Did you see that? It looks like it works pretty well. Of course, if you have any errors, feel free to ask in the comments section or join the Discord to ask other people too. Anyways, this would look pretty cool in other games. Make sure you like and subscribe so this reaches to more developers. And if that happens, well then we'll get some pretty cool games on Roblox. Wouldn't you love to see that? Okay, that's basically it for the tutorial. If you have any tutorial suggestions, please join the Discord and send the suggestions there. I'll be sure to review it. Bye-bye.